Tyler stood by the large window in the living room, staring out at the snow-covered street below. The world outside looked peaceful, completely unaware of the chaos that had taken over his life. It was the start of a new year, but nothing about it felt promising. His mother, the woman who had always been his pillar of strength, was now a hollow shell of herself, lost in a world of voices, shadows, and paranoia. For as long as Tyler could remember, it had just been him, his younger brother Ryan, and their mom. They lived in a small town in upstate New York, tucked away in an old house that was more comforting than its creaky floorboards and drafty windows would suggest. Their father had passed away when Tyler was only nine, leaving their mom to raise them both. And raise them she did, tirelessly working, making sacrifices, and always keeping a smile on her face no matter how hard things got. But something had changed over the past year. Something dark and insidious that Tyler couldn't quite put his finger on. It all began in the winter of last year, when their mom's health took a sudden and drastic turn for the worse. It started innocuously, as these things often do. At first, she seemed tired all the time, chalking it up to work and stress. She'd come home from her shift at the local diner and collapse into the worn-out recliner in the living room, too exhausted to even eat dinner some nights. Then, her appetite disappeared altogether. Weeks went by, and she barely touched food, claiming that everything made her nauseous. Tyler, worried but trying not to show it, took her to the doctor. They ran all kinds of tests, blood work, scans, consultations with specialists, but nothing came back. The doctors couldn't explain it. Physically, she was fine. There was no illness they could detect, no signs of cancer or other diseases. Yet, she was getting weaker by the day. Her skin took on a sickly pale hue, and her frame became gaunt, her clothes hanging loosely on her thinning body. I don't get it, Ty, his mom had said one night, sitting at the kitchen table and staring down at the untouched plate of food in front of her. I'm trying, but I just can't eat. It feels like my stomach's rejecting everything. Tyler had placed a hand on hers, feeling the coolness of her skin. We'll figure it out, Mom. Maybe we just need to try a different doctor. But they tried different doctors, they tried hospitals in neighboring towns, they tried holistic approaches, dietary changes, even some herbal remedies that one of their neighbors suggested. Nothing worked. Each day she got weaker, more fragile. It was as though something unseen was draining the life out of her. By late November, she could barely get out of bed, and Tyler and Ryan had to take over all the household chores. But even worse than her physical decline was the shift in her mental state. She started talking about hearing voices. At first, softly murmured comments about hearing someone calling her name when no one was there. Tyler tried to reassure her, saying it was just the stress. But deep down, he was getting scared. Then, one evening in early December, their neighbor Mrs. Briggs came over with a strange suggestion. Mrs. Briggs was an older woman who had lived on the street for decades and was known for her superstitious nature. She often talked about old remedies and folk tales passed down through her family. But this time, she said something that caught Tyler's attention. There's a man, she said, her voice lowered to a conspiratorial whisper. A healer. He's not a doctor, mind you, but he's helped people before, people who've been sick like your mom. He deals with things outside of medicine if you catch my drift. Tyler was polite, nodding along as she talked, but internally he dismissed the idea. A healer? Someone who dealt with the supernatural? It sounded like something out of a bad movie. But that night, when he mentioned it to his mom, her reaction surprised him. Maybe we should see him, she said quietly, her eyes hollow but hopeful. What's the harm, right? If the doctors can't help? I don't know, mom. Tyler replied, his skepticism clear. It sounds like a scam to me. I just, I don't know what else to do, she said, her voice trembling. I feel like I'm fading away, Ty, and if there's even a chance this could help, I think we should try. Reluctantly, Tyler agreed. The next day, they made the short trip to the outskirts of town, where the healer, a man named Mr. Morgan, lived. His house was an old, weather-beaten place, surrounded by tall trees that seemed to close in on it like a shroud. As they walked up the path, Tyler felt a chill run down his spine, though he couldn't explain why. Maybe it was the gloomy weather, or maybe it was the look of desperation in his mom's eyes. 
Mr. Morgan was an older man with sharp features and piercing eyes. He welcomed them in and sat them down in a dimly lit room filled with strange objects. Candles, bundles of herbs, and trinkets Tyler couldn't identify. He listened quietly as Tyler's mom explained her symptoms, her voice growing more anxious with each word. When she finished, Mr. Morgan sat back and nodded slowly, as though piecing something together in his mind. I've seen this before, he said in a low, gravelly voice. This is not a medical condition. This is something darker. Someone has placed a curse on you. Tyler felt the hairs on the back of his neck stand up. A curse? Seriously? Mr. Morgan looked directly at Tyler's mom, ignoring Tyler's skepticism. It's black magic, he continued. Someone, likely out of jealousy or resentment, has bound you with dark energy. It's why no doctor can find anything wrong, because it's not a physical ailment, it's spiritual. His mom's face went pale. But who would do something like that to me? I can't say for sure, Mr. Morgan replied, but I can help you break it. There's a ritual we can perform, but it has to be done carefully. Tyler wanted to laugh, to tell this man that he was insane and drag his mom out of there. But when he looked at her, he saw the faint glimmer of hope in her eyes, hope that had been missing for months. So, despite every instinct screaming at him to walk away, he stayed quiet. The ritual was bizarre. Mr. Morgan had them light candles, burn herbs, and recite strange chants while he circled around his mom, muttering incantations in a language Tyler didn't recognize. At one point, he placed a lemon and some chili peppers in her hands, instructing her to spin them in the air and throw them into a bowl. Tyler watched in disbelief, feeling more foolish by the second. When it was over, Mr. Morgan told them the curse had been weakened, but not entirely broken. You should start feeling better soon, he said, but it will take time, stay strong. For a while, it seemed like the ritual had worked. Tyler's mom started eating again, small amounts at first, but enough to keep her strength up. She even managed to get out of bed and move around the house a little. But then, things took a turn for the worse. At first, it was subtle. She'd stop in the middle of a conversation, her eyes glazing over as if she were listening to something far away. Then came the murmurs, the whispered conversations she claimed to overhear, but that no one else could. Tyler would catch her talking to herself late at night, standing in the hallway with her arms wrapped tightly around her body. They're here, she'd say, her voice trembling. They're always here. I can hear them. They want me to go with them. Tyler tried to reason with her, but it was like talking to a wall. She was convinced that the voices were real, that her dead relatives, her parents, Tyler's father, even long-dead grandparents, were speaking to her from beyond the grave urging her to join them. I'm not ready, she'd whisper, tears streaming down her face. I don't want to leave you boys yet. Then came the night that everything changed. It was just after midnight, and the house was eerily quiet. Tyler had gone to bed hours earlier but hadn't been able to sleep, his mind racing with worry. Just as he was about to drift off, he heard a sound that sent a jolt of adrenaline through his body, the front door opening. He jumped out of bed and rushed downstairs, finding his mom standing in the open doorway, staring out into the cold night. Mom, he shouted, grabbing her by the shoulders. What are you doing? It's freezing out here. They're coming for me, she said, her voice eerily calm. I have to let them in. Tyler felt his heart pound in his chest. Who's coming? My mother, she whispered. She's coming to take me away. No one's coming, mom, Tyler said, trying to pull her back inside. It's just your imagination. But she wouldn't budge. You don't understand, she said, her voice growing more frantic. She's here. She's outside, waiting for me. Tyler didn't know what to do. He could feel her body trembling under his hands, could see the wild fear in her eyes. She truly believed that someone, or something, was coming for her. Finally, after what felt like hours, he managed to coax her back inside and lock the door. But the fear didn't go away. She spent the next few days in a state of heightened paranoia, convinced that every creak in the house, every gust of wind, was a sign that the spirits were drawing closer. The final straw came on New Year's Eve. Tyler had hoped the start of a new year would bring some sense of normalcy back into their lives, but that hope was shattered when, just before midnight, his mom had another breakdown. It started with her usual mutterings about the voices, but this time, there was something different. 
something more terrifying. She kept repeating the same phrase over and over again. She's coming. She's coming for me. Tyler and Ryan tried to calm her down, but she was beyond reason. She ran from room to room, checking doors and windows, as if expecting someone to burst in at any moment. Then, without warning, she stopped in the middle of the living room, her eyes wide with terror. She's here, she whispered. I can see her. Mom, there's no one here, Tyler said, his voice shaking. But his mom wasn't listening. She backed up against the wall, her breath coming in short, hit panicked gasps. She's going to take me away, she cried. I don't want to go. Tyler rushed to her side, trying to hold her, but she pushed him away. No, stay back. If she sees you, she'll take you too. Ryan, pale and scared, stood frozen in the doorway, not knowing what to do. Tyler looked at him helplessly, his mind racing for a solution. Suddenly, their mom bolted for the door. Tyler and Ryan chased after her, but she was faster than they expected. She threw open the door and ran out into the snowy street, barefoot and screaming at the top of her lungs. She's coming for me, she shouted. She's gonna take me. Tyler caught up to her, grabbing her by the arm and pulling her back toward the house. Mom, stop. There's no one there. But she wouldn't stop. She fought him, screaming and flailing, her voice filled with terror. You don't understand. She's here. She's gonna take me. Tyler didn't know what to do. He couldn't reason with her, couldn't convince her that the voices and visions weren't real. All he could do was hold her tight, hoping that she would eventually calm down. After what felt like hours, she finally collapsed into his arms, sobbing uncontrollably. He carried her back inside and laid her on the couch, exhausted and broken. The next morning, Tyler took her to the hospital. The doctors, now recognizing the severity of her mental state, referred her to a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist diagnosed her with a severe psychotic disorder, explaining that she had lost touch with reality. The voices, the visions, it was all a result of her mind breaking down under the strain of her illness. They prescribed medication, and over time, the hallucinations stopped. But the woman who had once been Tyler's mother was gone. The medication dulled her senses, leaving her emotionless and vacant. She no longer laughed, no longer cried. She just sat there staring blankly ahead, as though her soul had been taken from her after all. It's been a year since that night, and Tyler still doesn't know what to believe. Was it really black magic? Was it all in her mind? He may never know the truth. But one thing is certain, that night, something dark and terrifying came for his mother. And in a way, it took her. What do you think? Was it a curse, or just a terrible illness? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And be sure to share this story if it gave you chills. Stay safe out there. Because sometimes, the scariest things are the ones we can't see.